So welcome to the Aspen interview series on lipid and parental nutrition. I am Jay Murtalo, clinical practice specialist for the American Society for Parental and Entry Nutrition and Professor Emeritus at The Ohio State University College of Pharmacy. It is my pleasure to be the interviewer moderator for the series. In this interview series, six international experts will discuss the role of lipids in parental nutrition with a specific focus on the evidence behind the use of omega-3 fatty acids. Lipid use in different patient populations will be addressed along with the cost effectiveness of intravenous lipid emulsions. It is a thrill for me to be able to discuss the important topic with the leading experts in nutrition. Our expert today is Professor Matt Berger, an intensivist and burns and clinical nutrition specialist at Lausanne University Hospital, Switzerland. Professor Berger, it is nice for you to join us in the series this morning, and I'm very much looking forward to your comments. Do you have anything to add to the introduction? Good morning. It, thank you for having me because this is an important topic and it's great it has been organized. So please go ahead with the questions. I will be pleased to discuss the issues with you. All right, well then let's get started. Uh, can you describe what omega-3 fatty acids are and why omega-3 fatty acids from fish oil are important? Well, there is some chemistry into this. And uh, we all are composed of fats, proteins and carbohydrates. And the fats are a very large family of, of substrates. They are providing much energy. But among the fats that are available, some are more important than others. And there are something called essential fatty acids, which are alpha-linolenic acid and linolenic acid. And these are absolutely essential. You have to provide them. You cannot live without them being provided. So then there will be a transformation in the body. And the omega-3 fatty acids we are talking about are actually the results of a long process of desaturation and elongation that occurs in very small amounts in the human body. It does occur, but very small amounts, so that we actually are dependent on the provision by the food of these very specific, which are long down the road in terms of chemistry. The end results of these chemical processes are two specific omega-3 fatty acids, the EPA and DHA, which have structural characteristics that modulate several processes in the body. Actually, they enter very rapidly into the membranes. And while people who have omega-6 fatty acids only have stiff membranes, as soon as you get these EPA and DHA into the membranes, they become fluid and move around. And this chemical change, this structural change, is associated with a series of other characteristics which make them anti-inflammatory, which make them pro uh, cicatrization and so on. So the early lipid emulsions we had, and I've been working with parental nutrition since the 80s, which is the early phase of that, they were life-saving because they were providing the very long alpha-linolenic acid and omega-6s, but they were improper and promoted inflammation when used alone. While since I've been using now for over 20 years in Europe, the omega-3 solutions, and we have seen a change of much better tolerance. And it clearly works on a clinical basis, not only in the lab. Thank you. Um, let's get a, a little deeper. And then uh, could you please explain the mode of action for omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids from fish oil and intravenous lipid emulsions? Well. There are multiple mechanisms which have been demonstrated absolutely nicely in both uh, in vitro settings and live settings. And actually there is a transformation of the equilapatoinic acid into various metabolites down the road. And these are the prostaglandins and leukotrienes, which are on the side of the anti-inflammatory effects. There, this 
fabrication of anti-inflammatory uh, compounds is what actually makes it very different from the omega-6s, where this change also occurs into leukotrienes and prostaglandins, but these are pro-inflammatory. So in the normal food, there is a balance with our normal food intake, if, you are have, if we are having a balanced diet between omega-3s and omega-6s. So it's all about getting this balance. And actually in our sick inflammatory patients, promoting the anti-inflammatory aspects because prolonged inflammation is something which is deleterious for our patients. Another aspect of the products after EPA and DHA is the production of the specialized pro-resolution mediators. This is a rather recent finding, which, well, it's the last 10 years where there has been lots of publication on this topic. And they result, these SPMSs, in immune modulation that actually downregulates the burning fire that has been activated by the injury or the disease. And these are produced absolutely directly from EPA and DHA. So if you don't have them in your diet, the resolution of inflammation, the wound healing processes and so on are slowed down. And actually this incorporation into membranes you, makes it absolutely to happen in all the body. That's very interesting. Uh, um, lastly, let's tie it together and, and uh, give us your thoughts with regards to what patient types could benefit from omega-3 containing intravenous lipid emulsions in the hospital. Well, there are quite a series. Actually, I would start with saying all. <laughs> <laughs> and why am I doing so? Because actually I just told you that uh, when you, are, you have to go parental, for some reason, you have to just re replace normal food. So if you're not providing a balanced diet intravenously to your patient, you are not doing a good job. So all the patients should have it. And in our hospital, it's been like that for years, be it on the ward, be it in the ICU or in intermediate care, all our patients receive standard bags which have the th all the blends of fatty acids. Uh, food which is not complete will favor cardiovascular disease and so on. This is so well known by the American Heart Association. But we have this also in the patients. But there are patients who benefit particularly. And uh, well, whereas for us in Europe, it's become standard, when we started, we gave it to the very inflammatory patients. And those where there is a standard inflammatory process, such as surgical patients. And actually many patients have shown benefit who were surgical, dependent on PN, and they did better when they had an incorporation of EPA, DHA into their parental nutrition compared to those with the standard omega-6 solution. It's also been shown to be probably better than pure omega-9 solutions. The best is to provide the four together. And this is something that we have just experienced clinically. So I said the surgical, but also when we are in the ICU, um, the pancreas and pancreatitis patients are particularly good candidates during the phase where the gut is not working at all knowing that enteral is the preference, but not feeding is not a good idea in these patients. So if you have to go parenteral for a while, go with omega-3s into it, it will attenuate the inflammation. Patients with hypertriglyceridemia, for any reason familial or other, we have had several cases of these. We even go in with pure omega-3 solutions. So we have in Europe mixed four fatty acid solutions, pure omega-3 solutions, and we will do compounding using the later in the cases of very particular high 
inflammatory response. This can be uh, ARDS patients also. So usually ARDS patients have a working gut, but those depending on PN will have a benefit of it. And you see after three to four days, an attenuation, attenuation of the inflammatory response. This is really measurable clinically. It's not research, it's our daily experience. So yes, uh, there are many patients who can benefit, actually all and some particularly much. Thank you so much. It's been really enlightening to hear your thoughts with regards to your experiences with different lipid emulsions that we've not really enjoyed in the United States until more, far, more recently. And we're still trying to figure out where and what choices we make with lipid emulsion use in our patient populations. It's, it's great to understand the physiology behind lipid emulsions. It's great to understand that there should be a balance uh, not just one over the other, because we all know in nutrition that too much of one thing is bad for us. Mm -hmm, and exactly. uh, also to see what patient types might have and the interesting factor the relationship to its role in inflammation and resolution of inflammation is very, uh, very nice to know. So uh, in closing, uh, I would me. like to add something though. Okay, great. You know that we are all fighting the loss of muscle mass. And there have been very nice papers showing that if you give balanced fatty acids, there is a less, lesser loss of muscle mass. So there has an impact also on, on this aspect. When you give balanced food, it's important. And an important point in, in uh, Europe, because always you've been told that there might be conflicts of interest. There are several companies in Europe providing these solutions. So you're not, uh, there is no pressure like that. It's open in Europe. So I hope you will get this openness and wide access. I mean, it's a real progress for us. We would never go back. Uh, in the development of the uh, parental nutrition fatty acids, we had the first great step, which was uh, towards MCT, LCT solutions. And then, we finally came to all the fatty acids. Mm -hmm. So really, I do hope for you in America that you will have all these available soon. Yes, I do as well. Thank you so much. It's been very interesting. I really appreciate you sharing your expertise. Um, for more information on the topic of lipids and parental nutrition, please see the February 2020 JPEN supplement, which is available on the Aspen website at www.nutritioncare.org. If you have not already listened, please seek out the other interviews in this series so as to benefit from all of the experts' perspectives on this important topic.